My guests this week in our Reporters Roundtable are Keith Faniff of the Journal Inquirer and Susan Haig of the Associated Press. We want to talk about how the uh, governor's budget plan is shaking out. It's been, you know, a week and a half or almost two weeks by the time some people see this show that her budget proposal's been out there. Um, do you think that her plan, Keith, has a chance of passing, uh, you know, 60 percent, 80 percent of it? Or do you think the Democrats who control the General Assembly are going to go in a totally different direction in developing a budget plan? I think they're going to be forced to go in some new directions because her plan, I, I don't believe, was balanced. But I think they're going to take large chunks of her plan. I think the Democrats are realizing, because of the limits on the options they're facing for borrowing and taxes, that they are going to have to scoop up some of the cuts that she proposed. What do you think, so? It, it sounds like that, but there is this big question that Keith mentioned, how whether or not her budget is in balance or not, and it looks like there's at least a $2 billion hole that they're going to have to find some way to make up the difference. Yeah, this is a nagging question that she really hasn't been able to get away from, and that that is the Democrats' claim that in the time that she had her budget printed and the time she delivered it, the deficit went up dramatically. She chose to use the old numbers. And in their view, that's because it was easier for her to balance a budget without raising taxes. Uh, is, that a, is that charge true? Or, I mean, I've never heard anyone complain before about the, the distance in time between the printing date and the time it's delivered. And, of course, that's got to be the same every year. And I, I can't imagine the General Assembly would have said no if she said, look, we're on the cusp of a real change in the deficit. I need another week. Uh, they might have grumbled a little, but... She'd have gotten it. I mean, all I know is that two weeks before that budget came out, the governor's budget director was talking about the, the, the deficit in the years to come being about $2 billion larger than the number they used in the budget. And it looks like they just stopped talking about it. What do you think, Sue? Well, it, she does. She's able now to put out a budget that doesn't raise tax and raise taxes. And a lot of the Democrats have said this was her way of putting something out there. She gets to be the good guy, and she makes the Democrats look like the bad guys because it puts them in the position of having to raise taxes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, it's politics, though, right? If I can add one quick thing sure. to Sue's, you, and and to to make it worse, you can't take the governor's basic budget and say, well, can't we just take her ideas and stretch them over a larger deficit but use the same concepts? Because about two-thirds of the way she closed the deficit as she saw it was with one-time solutions that don't stretch. The rainy day fund is a fixed amount. Mm -hmm. And you can't just say, well, we'll just use even more. It's, it's gone. Well, let me ask you both about the federal stimulus uh, package. We're taping this show on Friday morning, and it's possible that the House and or Senate down in Washington uh, could vote on that final compromise uh, today or tomorrow. Uh, but earlier, about a, week in, uh, about a week ago, when the Senate passed it, a lot of the money that was going to go to the states to help them with their deficits was taken out. And then later it was put back in. Uh, in fact, it, it appears that Connecticut actually comes out better than they originally expected, that they were going to get $2 billion, and we might be getting as much as $2.8 billion. Uh, if that money had not been put in, if that federal aid to states had not been put in, this budget problem here would be really big, wouldn't it? When I was talking to the Office of Policy and Management, they were saying that what, the, what probably would have happened was uh, if we didn't get this money, and, and we still don't know if we're going to get it or not, right. but uh, the governor's made a real point of trying to make sure that the cities and towns don't get any budget cuts, and then even if if we didn't get that money, they still wanted to keep that promise, so they would have to find other places to cut within the budget, and who knows where that could have been. That could have been deeper cuts into uh, Medicaid, social service programs, things like that. What do you think would have happened? I, I think we would have had a problem, but I actually think we're going to end up about where the governor predicted in her budget. There's Her budget had about $2 billion that the state could use to help it with its fiscal problems. And there was an additional chunk of money that didn't get attention because it wasn't technically in her budget. But that was about $700 million for shovel-ready projects. If you look at the final package, it's pretty similar to what the governor anticipated. Um, let's talk a little bit about deficit mitigation activity, which seems to be like a, like rolling thunder. It keeps happening every month or so. To deal not with future deficits, but to deal with the deficit in the current fiscal year that ends June 30th. Even as we speak, I think the governor's probably getting ready to release her latest set of deficit mitigation uh, suggestions. Earlier this week, the Republicans in the legislature put out theirs. The Democrats will probably have their own. 
Um, is this going to be a way of life, Keith, for the next six months or beyond? It's going to be a way of life that intensifies because it's like taking one lick on an ice cream cone that's dripping down your hand in five different places. We're not dealing with the problem fast enough. I mean, we're tearing through the rainy day fund like wet tissue paper. And, and people forget we've already done about $600 million either of small cuts, some extra federal money, non-stimulus that we lucked out and fell into, or things like a tax amnesty plan. If it weren't for that, this year's deficit, I mean, the rainy day fund would be spent and we'd be borrowing money. Mm -hmm. I think they've got to actually step up. This. Well, the thing on these deficit mitigation packages is it seems every every caucus or every group uh, wants to come up with something flashier. You know, the Republicans this week said maybe we should have Sunday liquor sales. Maybe we should have 24-hour liquor sales at casinos in Connecticut, all to raise money. I mean, is it turning into a little bit of a political circus to come up with the with the item that you think is going to get the biggest headline? Well, this is actually interesting because it's the first time they've actually come up with something. This is going to be the third time Rel has come out with a deficit mitigation plan and no one else has come up with any other ideas so perhaps they're thinking maybe we should come up with something flash, flashy to show that we do have some ideas but I know the Republicans say that they're not keen on some of the things they're proposing like the Sunday liquor sales or allowing 24-hour liquor sales at the casinos but they feel that they have to do something and you know it's a way to, to raise a little bit of revenue and mm -hmm. uh, try to grab some of those uh, folks that go over to Rhode Island to buy their liquor on Sunday. Well, Keith, I know that the governor's rap on these things is that she's a little teed off that Democrats are talking about her budget being two or three billion dollars out of balance and they say the deficit's bigger. But when she throws a three hundred and fifty million dollar deficit mitigation plan at them, they seem to only want to do about half of it. Uh, so what about that? I mean, that's a fair criticism right now. The Democrats, I think, have fiscal paralysis. They really are finally realizing how big the problem is, but they, they know what they have to do. They're just not ready to do it. And I think that's what the, the, the Republicans were trying to do this week, which was to get the Democrats to give up their big constituency. That's public employee unions. There's big savings there. It's not the one silver bullet, but that's an area. And I think the Democrats eventually are going to go there and try to get the governor to give up her own, and that's an upper-class income tax cut. Uh, real quickly, Sue, do you think this is going to be resolved in time by the end of the session, or do you think we're going to drag on for months to are get you, are you talking all resolved, everything? Everything. Yeah. Uh, it, it seems like they've got a lot to do. I, I, I mean, I, hopefully they'll get this fiscal year done before the end of the fiscal year, and then maybe they'll have more time to get rid of the next two fiscal year deficits. All right, we'll see how it plays out. Thanks for being with us. We'll see you soon on the record.